And a little bit later on in the show, we have Michael Campion in the studio. He's one of the, the foremost scholars in behavioral finance, and we're going to be grilling him about what we should be thinking when it comes to investing in these sorts of volatile markets. But before that, we have Neil Brown. He is the head of Citadel. Neil, uh, you've been the head since the 1st of April, so putting you in the job. How are the first few weeks going? Wonderful. Um, I started off by having a bit of a holiday at the end of March. I came back nice and relaxed. and. You know, it's been a smooth transition that's been planned for a while, so it's business as usual, and I'm really enjoying it. Well, let's talk about that, because uh, Keith Becky, the, the previous CEO, now the CEO of Paragon, which is your holding company, he took that role on in 2006. Why the decision now to get a, a full-time CEO for Citadel? What, what changed? Well, Paragon um, bought Stenham overseas, mm -hmm. which resulted in the head of Paragon, Sean Malnick, moving across to London, which really meant that, that Keith, who was sitting on both chairs for a while, he needed to focus more time on the Peregrine side of the business. Mm -hmm. So it just wouldn't be fair to, to Citadel to, to not have the full attention and as a result of that, it's just untenable to, to be doing both. Mm -hmm. So the time arose and we need it. Was it something that was always in the pipeline? Absolutely. I mean, as, as sort of Keith started um, being involved more on the Peregrine side, it was something that we, that we started considering and talking about and planning for. Um, in our business, transitioning is, is important and, and smoothness is important to we want to make sure that, that it happens you know, in, a, in, a nice, in a nice smooth way. So we started planning for it. I started working more closely with Keith for, for a while now. It was a, it was a planned, planned thing, absolutely. Any major changes in store for Citadel Health Science? No, not at all. You know, I've been part of the executive committee of Citadel since 2002. I haven't been keeping a secret list of, of things I'd love to do um, later. Um, it's absolutely part of what we've been doing or continue doing and, and hopefully be successful at it. Mm. Does, does being an actuary, because that is your, your original background, does that change the way you look at the world, particularly when it comes to a market such as this, where it is a little bit more volatile than, than one would like? Well, firstly, I'm not, I'm not qualified actually. Um, I did study um, actuarial science and I did progress reasonably far there. But um, my focus has shifted. I've been involved in the product administration side of the business and obviously as part of the executive committee of Citadel, I've been deeply involved in the business itself, I think. You know, any, any sort of formal studying that you do, do does, does direct your thoughts and, and I am a detailed person, I am a, a numbers person, I do, I do like that, so I think it's part of, part of who I am. But I don't think it, it sort of you know, massively influences necessarily the decisions we make or the way we do things. Mm. There was a decision made at Citadel a while ago to focus on people predominantly with more than two million in, 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 in capital that they could invest, getting away from the, the, the sort of the, the smaller amounts of money. Do you think that's helped in this sort of environment where Consumers are beginning to have a little less money in their pockets. So they're looking at, at possibly cashing out some of their investments. Has that meant a, a more stable outlook for for Citadel going forward? I think yes. I think having being more wealthy does does sort of um, make you a little bit more bulletproof, perhaps. And but you know, for us, it's a, it's a case of making sure that the financial planning and the plans that are in place are robust. So I don't think it's necessarily so much about being being very wealthy, but it's about having a solid and good plan and one that is is looked after very well and maintained and that one is invested properly so that you, you know, are protected in, in, in times like this. Mm -hmm. Do you think, um, so, do you think the, the decision was the right one to take at that point in time when, when, when Citadel was contemplating or was forced to sort of let go of time? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, there, there are two aspects to that. The one is one's own business model and, and, and what one does and where one wants to be. And, you know, we, we would like to operate more, you know, sort of high up the, the wealth triangle. But secondly, also, you need to look at the value offering that you present to, to your clients. And if there's a mismatch there and if they're strong, then the best advice for those clients is really to, to go elsewhere. And we, you know, we follow the proper process of engaging with those clients and assisting them to, to find a solution that was appropriate for them. Mm. Looking at the, the interim results, clearly there is a, a good, uh, a strong inflow of, of money into the, into the, into the business. Uh, where is that coming from? What, what's the makeup of your client base? Now, there, there are a number of different sources. I mean, traditionally we, we, we operated more in the sort of business executive market. That has been changing. A number of changes there. Obviously, the economic um, growth that we've been experiencing coupled with the uh, the new wealth that's been emerging as a result of the black economic empowerment. We've seen that and experiencing that. We're also seeing an increase in the number of females that we have um, within our client base. And then also on the entrepreneurial side, we, 
So we are seeing more, more of those clients. But I think that's also a function of not so much necessarily what we are doing differently, although obviously one, one solution changes over time, but also the economy and how that's been growing and the areas that have been growing, um, you know, we kind of get the result of that. Do you see a, an interesting trend or are there any specific trends that come out of, of the various types of clients that you have looking at, say, Africa, for example, or, or kind of CSI or any specific interests that, the, that specific clients have? Sure. You know, within our client base, I think it's difficult to, to pick out trends. Um, we're so focused on individuals and, and, their, and their family circumstances and customizing for them. Um, there are none, no, no exact trends that come to mind, you know, at the moment. Um, it's more about looking at the individual and customizing for them. Is there any interest in investing on, in the rest of the conference? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's something that, that, that we always have on our radar screen. I mean, there's no specific focus on, on that. Our, our solution is an international one, so we constantly are are looking internationally, you know, where the best place is to, to place money. We for many years have, you know, have been saying that you need to diversify and, you know, you need to diversify away from, from, from South Africa. Obviously, you need to match um, your, 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 your investments with, with kind of your liabilities. So you need to have a significant portion in South Africa, but you need to have a healthy portion outside South Africa as well. And depending on the client, that'll vary. But um, there we, we, look, we look widely and Africa is absolutely part of that looking, but it's not necessarily a huge part of the, of the investment portfolio at this point in time. In the, in the six months, the uh, two September new inflows are strongly up 70 odd percent. Uh, is that likely to change given the, the, the kind of increased volatility? Are, are people a little less willing to, to kind of interest their funds to anybody else at this point in time? So the one, the one thing we have learned is that the future will surprise. Um, I think absolutely conditions are, are getting tougher. I think we believe you know, from our perspective that that'll be good for us because we believe in, exactly. a, in, in the fact that it'll separate the men from the boys. You know, I think over the last four years or so maybe um, it's been easy and I um, heard a good quote this morning that you shouldn't um, confuse a bull market with brains. So I think, you know, it does give an opportunity for, for us to show how we are different, the value that, that we can add and, and within the space, even if the markets become a little bit tougher, um, I think, you know, the players like the Dell who, who have a sound process, have a good track record, can add value. Um, I think that'll be good for us. Mm -hmm. that, so. Let's talk about uh, the process, the, the fees that you charge, how all of that works. So, some have said that uh, a benchmark of CPI is a little bit too soft for, for exactly that, to separate uh, men from boys, so to speak. Uh, what, what's your take on that? I think there are a couple of aspects. I mean, firstly, we, we lower our, our, our fixed fee. Mm -hmm. So you, you, we take a reduction in our fee and then we add on top of that a, a performance fee. I think you need to look at the, at the detail of the way that's calculated. I think our, our calculation methodology is very sound and pure. We go back to inception, so we don't, we don't throw away the history. Our clients... Um, what do you mean by that? I mean, we, we determine the client's rate of return from the inception date, from their inception date to, to the current So when they started investing with Absolutely. Them. You know, what other guys do within their funds is they just calculate it from January to December. So if you've had a bad year, you effectively can, can, can throw that away. Um, and then also, you know, uh, it's not just CPI, CPI after cost and, and investment taxes. So it might seem simple and, and easy, but, it, but it's not. Mm. Is it going to get tougher? Um, I think, I think that, you know, as I said earlier, the future will surprise and we don't really know where things are going. But our firm belief is that it's, it, markets are going to, to become tougher, that things are going to slow down, that there's maybe over-exuberance in certain parts. Um, but there's also opportunity and you, you know you need to have a close look and, and get good advice and, and, and come to someone that, that can provide you with that. Mm. And if we look at uh, the challenges facing for Dell now, what, what would you say are the big ones at the moment? Sure. Um, I think there are a number of sort of things that are happening, you know, they're more entrance into our, into our market. Um, I think it's becoming a little bit more difficult perhaps to, to, to differentiate just on the, on the face of things when you look at the, the various offerings. Keeping talent is, is, is an issue. Um, we need to make sure that you know we don't. Our business is built around around great people and with good values, and obviously it's our, it's our key asset. Um, and then obviously you know investment markets. Are also, if, if things are going well, that then it goes well for us too. But but as I said earlier, you know within that there are opportunities as well. So increased competition is great. It raises awareness, increases increases um, clients' education levels and abilities to, to engage and understand value. Um, so yeah, while while they are to expand the opportunities within those as well. I would like to see uh, a bit more consolidation in the sector, given that uh, there, there has been quite a lot of uh, new players coming onto the market in what has generally been a, a pretty strong bull market. Sure, I, I really don't know. Um, from our position, it's absolutely not something that, that, that mm -hmm. we're looking at. Um, 
Fair enough. And you're a logistic philosopher, so do you know much about behavioral finance? Yeah, I actually just attended a great, a great seminar this morning on, on behavioral finance, um, which was um, done through the Institute of Behavioral Finance. Mm -hmm. And uh, do, do, are you using some of those presets in, in the, the type of work that's at Adobe? Absolutely. I mean, you know, um, I think it, it's definitely something that resonates with us. It's something that we've perhaps been doing intuitively and then have integrated within um, the way that we approach what we do without necessarily, you know, having the theoretical framework um, that, that I heard of, you know, this morning. Um, but yeah, absolutely, it's an important part of, of what we do is to understand clients. And it not only goes to the investment needs, but also who they are and, and, and what, they, what they need. Neil Brown is the CEO of Citadel. And up next, Michael Pompion. And we're going to be exploring the uh, topic of behavioral finance in a little bit more detail. And how exactly one should uh, guard against uh, the uh, emotion coming into investing. Don't go anywhere.